The doctor is in and today's topic, breast cancer and the treatment options that are available. Instead of only one or two options today, there's a large menu of treatment choices. It can make the decision on which path to choose sometimes feel overwhelming. So joining us today is Dr. Scott Ackerman. He is one of the First Coast's leading oncologists. He is with us every week to discuss a variety of health topics. And today we're going to review the different options that are available uh, when, when you hear about that breast cancer diagnosis because it's something that just is overwhelming in and of itself. And then you look at the treatment options and then you think, well, goodness, what path do I choose? So what are the treatment options there for someone who has that breast cancer diagnosis? Thanks, Casey. In all cancers, we have different treatment options, and we have different types of treatment. So breast cancer, like other cancers, we have three primary kinds of treatment. Surgical treatment, radiation treatment, and chemotherapy. So surgery is usually used to remove the tumor or to biopsy the tumor. Radiation is used to provide radiation to eradicate the tumor, to kill cancer cells where the tumor is or maybe around it. And chemotherapy is drugs that go through the body, all over the body, to uh, attack cancer cells wherever they might be. But specific to breast cancer, one of the big options that women have and one of the big decisions that women need to make <clears throat> when faced with the diagnosis of breast cancer is whether to undergo a mastectomy or, or, or what we call breast conservation surgery, which is a lumpectomy and radiation therapy treatments. There have been many studies that have compared a uh, mastectomy, which is a disfiguring process and it generally uh, means a fairly long recovery rate, uh, compared to breast conservation therapy, which is a lumpectomy and radiation. And all these studies have shown that the overall survival rate, for, com when you compare the two, is the same. You know, and that to me is kind of surprising because you would think that a mastectomy would be, you would have a better chance of survival by just getting rid of the whole breast. So what happens is, that's, it, it, I know it sounds counterintuitive, right. but what really, is, the, the whole story is that with a mastectomy, you have a slightly lower recurrence rate, local recurrence rate, than a lumpectomy and radiation. But if you add in those women, and the recurrence rate is only about 5% with a lumpectomy and radiation, the recurrence rate with the mastectomy is about 1%. But if you add in for those w women who unfortunately have a recurrence, you add in a salvage mastectomy, we do a mastectomy then, and look at the, and, and include that in the total, the overall survival rate is exactly the same. So just quickly for our viewers, kind of explain what the conservation therapy is all about before we get into some of the treatment options. Breast conservation therapy leaves the breast intact after the surgery and treatment is done. In breast conservation therapy, it's not for every woman. It's, uh, a woman has to be, be the right candidate, meaning that her tumor has to be of sufficiently small size. Her breast has to be sufficiently large so that when we remove the tumor, we leave a good cosmetic result and leave the breast you know, pretty much intact. So we remove the tumor surgically. We evaluate the margins around it to be sure we get completely around it. Sometimes we need to take some lymph nodes out of the um, armpit as well. And this is followed by radiation treatment to the breast after, this, after the surgery. The radiation treatment either begins within a month of the surgery, or if a woman needs chemotherapy as well, we do the radiation after the uh, completion of all the chemotherapy. When we give the radiation treatments, we radiate uh, the entirety of the breast because cancer cells can go through the ducts and they can lodge somewhere else in the breast, so the entirety of the breast needs some radiation treatment. And the area in the breast where the tumor originally was, the tumor cavity, the mm -hmm. biopsy cavity, yeah. that needs an extra dose of radiation, what we call a boost. That, so we give a boost dose to there. We treat the entire breast for four or five weeks, and we give about a week or so as a boost in that area of the breast. Well, and when you say boost, I know that there's a lot of people out there. What, what does that mean, boost? Boost means we want to give an extra dose of radiation, a boost dose of radiation to that part of the breast. So the whole breast gets yeah. this much radiation, and we give a little bit more to that area in the breast where the tumor was. So we do it all sorts of ways. Okay. Historically, we would do it by, by aiming a radiation machine right at the woman's breast. We would, we would feel her breast and identify the area within the breast where the tumor was removed. You could feel a a little defect, a little cavity in there, yeah. and we would take some x-ray images to, to confirm that as well, and then aim a radiation beam straight into the breast. We use a special beam that doesn't go very deep into the breast, but still the lung gets a little bit of radiation, the skin gets quite a bit of radiation doing that when we do it that way. Uh, we have a new technology called AccuBoost, and the AccuBoost treatment is a way to accurately provide the boost dose of radiation to the breast. And let me explain to yeah. you, if yeah, you don't yeah. mind, how we do that. So this is a model of a woman's breast, and you can see in it some, some tumors in there. So we, we take a mammography machine, and it's modified. 
and the woman's breast goes into the mammography machine. We take a digital mammogram, and we could see on the mammogram where in the breast the tumor was. There is some changes mammographically in there from where the surgeon removed the tumor. We identify that area in the breast, and then we take this small cone here, we put it on top of the upper paddle on the mammogram machine, and we have another one that goes underneath on the bottom, localized directly over and under the breast cavity, the tumor cavity rather, and then radiation goes into each of these cones and the radiation goes into the breast. We then take the woman out of the mammogram unit and then we squeeze from the right and left, kind of like this, and do the same thing from both sides. Um, and so the, the, the applicators are oriented from four different angles. So we're running short on time, but very quickly, the advantages of this, it seems like it's targeted. It seems it, like you're going right. to get it. The advantage is twofold. Okay. Number one, you, know, you see what you're treating. You know you're getting the boost dose exactly in the right spot in the breast. And number two, less radiation to normal tissue. And so less side effects and uh, better cosmesis in the end. All right. Dr. Ackerman, thank you as always, our expert giving us so much insight and perspective on all of this. I want to thank you, of course, for sponsoring this segment. And Dr. Ackerman, he is with us every Friday. He's going to be next week, and we're going to be uh, talking about genetic testing. And for questions regarding this or really any health topic that you might want to know about, you can visit firstcoastoncology.com and confidentially submit your questions to Ask the Doctor.